I posted a video a couple days ago about um, upgrading our access points and I, I showed you a couple of different versions and I did a bunch of real world tests but looking back at the video I feel like I didn't do a good job actually showcasing the access points so depending on what you need the access point for will be depending on which one of these that you want to buy now both of these are obviously a good choice they're both running on Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11 AC for you tech guys they're both capable of pushing out about 1200 megabits a second um, you got the 5 gigahertz band and the 2.4 gigahertz band which is going to be a, a, a great upgrade if you haven't upgraded yet upgrade it's definitely worth the upgrade these are the two cheapest ones right now that actually are Wi-Fi 5 capable and have gigabit ports. So you're actually able to push your high internet bandwidth through the routers themselves, through the access points themselves. So I, I went through, I tested both of these. Um, the TP-Link has a little bit better range. It's not a lot better, but um, that, that's clearly from the antennas. But they both have their ups and downs, so I'm going to go through now and I'm going to talk about those. Okay, we're going to start off with the TP-Link TLWA1201. And this is just a look at the box. As you can see, it shows you the 5 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz. It shows you that it's capable of beam forming. One of the big advantages of this one is passive PoE. Now, if you don't know what PoE is, it means power over Ethernet. And all that means is you can run the power through your Ethernet cable to the access point, And the access point can utilize that power to operate without having to plug into the wall. All right. Now, pulling it out of the box, this is what it looks like. You can see it looks almost exactly like it does on the box. One thing I do like about this one, we've got four tall antenna so there's no doubt they'll be able to stretch a long way out and also by having four separate antennas if you're beam forming with one of them then the other one can beam form with the other one now if you have wireless in right now which is wi-fi 4 uh, or if your if your access point say something like 300 in on them then you're going to have a, a a big upgrade here because we're going up to the next standard which is Wi-Fi 5. Now Wi-Fi 5, which is um, 802.11 AC, has been around since about 2013 or 14, but it's just now starting to be widely adopted in the last year, around 2020, 2021. And it's 2000, it's the end of 2021 right now, and we're just now switching over at our business here. So the Wi-Fi 5, what it's, what it's doing is, it's, it's going to have the same wireless in technology built into it for the 2.4 gigahertz band. So it's like you're, half of it's going to be the existing router, but you'll probably have better signal by the taller antennas. And the other thing is you're going to have the new 5 gigahertz band, which is going to be able to push a lot more data a lot more bandwidth through on that 5 gigahertz band than you can handle on the 2.4 as you can see in some of the real world tests we did in the other video all right now just swinging it around you can see here in the front it's got nice ports of ventilation you can tell it's got pretty good ports of ventilation we got your lights here all right it's your power light this is your LAN light your ethernet light all right, and one of these is for the 2.4 band, and one of them is for the 2. Point, I mean, for the 5 gigahertz band. I don't have it right here with me right now. It's in the office, but this comes with the power cord, and it comes with an Ethernet cable, and it comes with a PoE inverter. So you can take the power adapter and plug it straight into here, and use it like that, and plug your Ethernet here, or you can plug your power adapter in close to your ethernet source. So where your original router's at, you can plug the power into the wall and then you can plug the power from that connection that would have connected here into the 
PoE inverter and then you'll plug the ethernet cord into that and then you'll be able to supply the power and the ethernet through your ethernet cable to here and this will be able to use the ethernet port for power and data and that's very good if you want to run an access point somewhere but you don't want to have to run a power supply there you don't want to have to run a power cable and that's, that can be very handy and it's awesome that this is included for around the same price as the other one here it's only about five dollars more at the moment all right so one other thing i want to talk about if you're upgrading one very important thing on this on both of these they have they have gigabit ethernet ports the ethernet port is capable of a thousand megabits per second which is going to be very important if you're trying to look for future compatibility which a lot of networks will be offering faster speeds the further we go into the future okay we got a power button on and off which is nice a lot of them you can only just plug it up and go and that's it on this one you don't have to keep plugging and unplugging if you want to work or test on it you can just push the button and cut it off you have the WPS button and you have a reset button in case something happens and you get logged out and you need to go back to factory settings and reset it. Multiple operation modes, you got client mode, multi-SSID mode, you got a range extender mode or access point mode. And we're using it in the access point mode. It, it shows you here, this is how your POE injector will work. You can shoot it up to 100 feet away with power over your ethernet cable. Okay. And this shows you just an idea how beamforming technology works. The good thing about this one too, it has um, a built-in capability to like advertise. So if you wanted to show a ad or a, you wanted a page that viewers had to see before they log into your Wi-Fi network, then this one will be the one to go with also. So that's just something to think about. And there is only one ethernet port in here. So you'll be shooting ethernet in and then you'll be sending it out over Wi-Fi. There are no more ports for you to um, use this as a switch or something. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next option we spoke about the other day and we're gonna to try to get into the same amount of depth with this one. Um, TP-Link routers, I want to say they have a two year warranty. Um, I'm not 100% sure, I'll check. Um, this Netgear claims to have a three year warranty. So that's one thing that if you wanna, um, if warranty is important to you, you want it to be covered for as long as possible. The Netgear is also another good option for you. And personally, I've had T I've had problems in the past with TP-Link not wanting to replace items I have purchased from them. So I don't know really. That's one bad thing I will say about these. We're not, I'm not sure how a warranty claim will go. TP-Link to me personally, maybe other people's have better experience. But um, twice I've, I've had issues with routers I bought from them and they act like they didn't want to replace it. One of them I had about a month. But when they do work, they're awesome. And I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't. All right, so next up on our list is gonna be the Netgear WAC-104. It's gonna be the same standard. This is Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11ac, which is gonna allow us to have a 2.4 gigahertz band and a five gigahertz band for a total of around 1200 megabits per second. Both of these are designed for um, small office, home office, idea for small business, all right. Let me just give you an overview of all of the specs. It says it can handle 64 clients. This one only can handle one SSID, but it has four ethernet ports. So that's something to look at. And this claims to be a three year warranty. All right, out of the box, this one just comes with an ethernet cable and a power adapter. This access point is not power over ethernet ready, so you cannot run this one with power over ethernet like you can the other one. Even if you had the adapter, this one doesn't have the technology built in to allow the ethernet port to use PoE. Looking side by side, I want to point something out here. This one only has two antennas, and the antennas are only about half as tall, but the actual routing unit 
the actual unit itself is much larger. So just a side-by-side -side view of these. You can tell that the neck gear has a lot more larger body, but the TP-Link has much longer antennas and it has more of them. All right, moving to the back here. We got our power cord moving on right to left. We got our power in 12 volt, one and a half amp, which is the same as the other one. We have our power on and off switch, which is also my reset switch. All right, here's where the differences begin. On this one, we have four ethernet ports instead of just one. And all four of these are ethernet, are gigabit ready. So these are gigabit ethernet ports. They can handle a thousand megabits per second each. You know, our other one only has one. All right, on these, they also have the option to turn the Wi-Fi off. So if you just wanted to use this as like a regular um, network switch, you could actually turn the broadcast signal off. All right, and then you have our WPS to connect without a password, just like the other one. Um, really, that's that's the only major difference is on this one is, um, you would think that's ventilation, but it's not really. On the sides though, look, you can tell. This one looks like it'll probably get a lot better ventilation. So aesthetics is another thing we need to take into consideration for some people. Say if you only need one ethernet port and um, your range isn't too far anyway, and you're just looking for the cheapest thing to get by with, I think this is the one to go with. But it's about aesthetics. Which one do you think is prettier? You know, some people like the white, sleek, um, you know, that's like an iPhone-y kind of look. With the four antennas, some people like the big long antenna some people don't like the antennas some people think they're hideous all right some people like this this is like a smaller um sleeker looking device it's more smooth it doesn't have the rough edges as this one and it's kind of pretty um it i could see this one fitting on like a entertainment center in your living room or something and blending right in beside a ps4 or something all right, so we got this one coming in at about $45 on Amazon. This is the TP-Link TLWA1201. In this corner, we have the Netgear WAC104. It's about $39.99 on Amazon, 40 bucks. And these are the two cheapest office wireless access points I could find on Amazon that have gigabit capability. They're both Wi-Fi 5. All right, so there's some things up here. The question, which one of these are better? Which one should you buy? It's up to you. Um, both of these are quality. Both of them work. Both of them are way better than, than the old standard Wi-Fi 4 802.11n. Um, they're both about the same price. So if you're looking for um, if you're looking for PoE capabilities, power over Ethernet, go with a TP link. If you're looking for whichever one just has the better range, go with the TP link. If you're looking for something that looks more sleeker that might blend in, go with the Netgear. If you're looking for something that has multiple Ethernet ports that can all handle gigabit, go with the Netgear. If you're looking for the absolute cheapest option that'll work, go with the Netgear. But at the end of the day, it, it depends on what matters for you and your situation. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, um, maybe I'll go through later and make a video on how to go about setting these up and doing what, whatever you need to do. But for right now, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you decide which one of these you should go with. It's your home or business. If you were on the edge or leaning about is it time to upgrade or not, I mean, I, I really hate asking you guys to like and subscribe, but I guess that's part of the job. So if you don't mind, go hit the like button. Um, go subscribe. If you're not subscribed, we're up to about 63 subscribers now. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I hope that my videos help every single one of you guys, and I hope that I can continue to do so in the future. All right, so thank you. We love you. Have a blessed day.